What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another recall by Data IQ video. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to transition your career to become a data analyst. So whether you are a nurse, a teacher or an accountant, we're going to be looking at these steps that you should take in order to make that transition. Starting it off with number one is going to be learning the right skills. And for anybody who is just starting out, I highly recommend starting out with learning SQL. SQL allows you to query and pull data from databases so that you can actually look into it and find insights in that data. And by far is a skill that I recommend you learn first. Honestly, it was the first thing that I ever learned as a data analyst, and it took me a long way in my career before I learned any of these other skills that I'm about to mention. SQL is also fairly simple to learn the basics, and there are a ton of free resources online where you can learn all the basics and even up to the intermediate or advanced level all for free. The next skill that I recommend you learning is Excel. And Excel is kind of one of those universal skills that even if you're not a data analyst, it's still a great tool to learn. Data analysts really use Excel for a lot of different things like communicating with clients or stakeholders. Most of the time, the clients that you're working with are not gonna be data people, so you can't just give them a SQL script for them to pull their own data. They're just gonna want you to send it to them in an Excel. And another thing that data analysts can use it for is for data cleaning or data exploration, things that they might do in SQL, but if it's a small enough data set, you can just do it in Excel before you actually put it into SQL. The next skill that I recommend learning is a BI tool like Power BI or Tableau. I say Power BI or Tableau because those are by far the two most popular options on the market right now, and there are a ton of companies hiring for that skill specifically. These tools are pretty straightforward. They allow you to take your data and create really good visualizations and dashboards that people can look at and gain insights from. And so it really works well in conjunction with something like SQL or Excel, where you're pulling the data from it, and then you're creating these really nice visualizations for your clients. The last skill that I recommend is Python, and I recommend learning that one last because I think it's gonna take the most time to learn. With Python, you can do just about anything you want, like connecting to an API to pull data in or creating a data frame in Pandas or even creating a visualization with something like Matplotlib or Seaborn. It can be really intimidating to learn Python when you're first starting out because it's a programming language and it's a little bit different than all these other things that we've looked at today. If you're interested in learning analytics, dataiku.com has an analytics quick start where you can learn a ton about joining data, creating visualizations all for free on their website. I think it's a really great resource for you to check out. There'll be a link in the description. Number two is gonna be creating a portfolio website. And I highly recommend anybody who's trying to make a transition into data analytics to actually create a portfolio. If you're transitioning from a career like a nurse or an accountant, you need to be able to prove that you know these skills well. And so you wanna create a portfolio website where you can put projects that you've worked on that showcase your skills and abilities. By far the hardest part of this step is to actually create the projects. What you need to do is you need to find or create the data, then you need to showcase that skill. So whether you're trying to showcase SQL or Excel or Python or Tableau, you need to actually think of a use case for that data and then actually make it happen. There are a lot of really good projects you can find on YouTube and other places where they will actually walk through the projects with you. And so you can get some inspiration from those and then build out your entirely own project from scratch. And then after you have those projects built, it's all about displaying it on a website where someone like a hiring manager can go and look at it. You may be able to use something like GitHub Pages where you can create a website for free if you have all of your projects on GitHub. Or you can use a template website like Wix or Squarespace where they kind of have everything set up for you and it's a lot easier to build. Step number three is creating a data analyst resume. And honestly, this might be the most important step because if you learn all the skills and you create all the projects and you have a beautiful website, you are not gonna get any interviews at all if you do not have a resume. Now, when I say a resume, I mean a data analyst focus resume, not a nurse resume or an accountant resume, a resume that's gonna help you land a job as a data analyst. Now, your previous experience may actually be really useful in finding a job as a data analyst. Let's say you have a healthcare background, you can use that healthcare experience to help you find a data analyst job in the healthcare industry. So I don't recommend just removing all of your experience if it's not a data analyst position. I would look at your experience and think, is this relevant and would this actually help me land a job as a data analyst? I would also be adding all the skills that we just talked about and you just learned onto your resume so that a hiring manager or a recruiter will know all the skills that you're really good at now. I also recommend putting your portfolio website in your contact section at the top 
So when a hiring manager or a recruiter checks out your resume, they can click on your website and check out all your projects and really see your skill level. Number four is gonna be updating your LinkedIn profile. And honestly, I've gotten several jobs from LinkedIn where recruiters have said, hey, you have a really good profile, send us your resume, and I sent it to them, and I eventually got a job from that contact. Now I say update your LinkedIn profile, but if you don't have a LinkedIn profile already, I highly recommend creating one. It's a really great place to showcase who you are as an employee as well as a person. So you can put your skills and your projects and your website on there. So if somebody checks out your website, they can see all of those things in one place. But you can also add some more personal things like extracurricular activities and hobbies that you do outside of work as well. Step number five and the very last step is working with a recruiter and applying to jobs. Now, you do not have to work with a recruiter in order to apply for jobs. I just highly recommend it. Honestly, when I first started out, I didn't really know how to work with a recruiter, so I just tried to do it all by myself and it went horribly. It was only when I was working with a recruiter where I finally started to understand the process and I was able to start getting interviews consistently. Now you can reach out to recruiters online, you can cold call them, you can send them emails, but honestly, looking on LinkedIn and just Googling recruiters in your area is one of the best ways to find recruiters and reach out to them. After that, it's really up to you to nail that interview and land your first job as a data analyst. I hope that this has been helpful and I hope that this will help you transition your career to become a data analyst. This has been another recall by Data IQ Video. Be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.